Because of the large internal space most tanks possess, it is not uncommon for them to be repurposed as infantry carriers when they no longer fulfill their primary purpose. This conversion may be as simple as removing the turret and installing some seats, like the World War II era kangaroo, or feature a more extensive remodeling like the Israeli Nagmachon. Not all tanks are appropriate for such roles, however, and in the case of North Korea's M2009, the designers created an ugly middle ground, a vehicle neither appropriate to fulfill the duties of an APC, nor of a tank. Welcome to Tank Encyclopedia. I'm Rel Wood, and today I'll be covering the M2009, a recent North Korean APC based upon an older light tank design. If you like what we do and want to see more of it, don't forget to like the video, and if you haven't already, subscribe so you don't miss a single upload. Before we continue, it's time for today's sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. They're a free-to-play mobile game set in a fantasy world where you assemble a team of heroes to take on bosses, dungeons, and more. Our favorite heroes are the tanks. Powerful heroes who can take a punch for their team and keep going, such as Angar, a legendary champion that provokes enemies, or Kyoku, one of the best team defenders in Raid. This month, Raid just released a giant new feature, Awakening, and a brutal new dungeon, Iron Twins Fortress. But there's more, they've also released a super-powered legendary version of everyone's favorite champion, Death Knight. Everyone can get the ultimate Death Knight for free just by logging in and playing Raid for 7 days between now and October 27th. You can also use the Dark Rises promo code, that's D-K-R-I-S-E-S, -E for a bunch of free items to instantly level your strongest champion all the way to level 50. If you haven't started playing Raid yet, click the link in the description or scan the QR code and you'll get bonuses worth $30. A free epic champion, Ana. 200,000 silver, 1 energy refill, 1 XP boost, and 1 ancient shard. All these bonuses will be waiting for you here. The M2009, as the name suggests, was first identified by the American Department of Defense in 2009, which gave the vehicle its designation. In North Korea, the vehicle appears to be known as the Chunma D. Chunma standing for racehorse, and D being a transliteration of the fourth letter of the Korean alphabet. However, the vehicle is believed to actually be a derivative of another North Korean design, the M1981 light tank, which itself bears more than a passing resemblance to the Soviet PT-76, though carrying a heavier 85mm gun. Over the years, the M1981 has become increasingly obsolete, with the range of targets it can engage to good effect slowly dwindling. The M2009 is theorized to have been the result of repurposing the production lines of the M1981 to produce a vehicle more relevant, though perhaps not more modern, to the Army's needs. In some respects, the M2009 represents a return to form for the M1981. The light tank's hull was modified from that of the 323 armored personnel carrier. The hull and suspension of the M2009 remains mostly unchanged from its predecessor. The hull itself is a lengthened version of the 323, with six road wheels on a torsion bar suspension. The vehicle is also amphibious and features hydrojets to improve its water crossing capabilities. The exact engine model is unknown, with 240 and 320 horsepower engines of various origins being mentioned in sources. The largest changes to the hull are modifications to the cooling system, with a single central grille for engine cooling rather than separate ones, and the addition of a stowage box. As the external appearance of the vehicle remains mostly unchanged from its light tank ancestor, it is possible that many of the internal components have also remained the same. This means spare parts for one could be used for the other, as well as reducing disruption of the production process. This could also mean that some aspects of the vehicle remain relatively dated compared to modern counterparts, although at present this is only speculation. North Korea isn't in the habit of disclosing such information. The turret and 85mm gun of the M1981 have been replaced by a cylindrical turret mounting a pair of 14.5mm KPV machine guns, as well as a coaxial 7.62. This is similar to the armament mounted to the older 323 APC. Once considered heavy armament for an APC, the proliferation of 35 and 40mm armed APCs and IFVs meant it is now much more moderately armed. The turret also mounts an infrared searchlight, as well as six smoke dischargers. When seen during Korean parades, the vehicle is often seen with an IGLA surface-to-air missile launcher mounted on the turret, typically seen behind the commander's cupola, although at least one image seems to suggest a forward mounting exists as well. 
It is unknown if the addition of the eagle is purely for appearances during parades or if it's intended for use in combat. Though, photos of North Korean vehicles outside of parades often show them without launchers mounted. It is theorized that the eagle is stored in the stowage box when not in use. The vehicle is operated by a crew of two or three. A driver and a commander can be identified and there is space for another person next to the driver. This may be a crew member, such as a co-driver or possibly a dismount element. Although not an uncommon number of crew, the suggested lack of a gunner may mean the commander has to fill in. If this is the case, it leaves the commander of an M2009 in the unenviable position of needing to command the vehicle while loading and aiming and firing a trio of machine guns. If the Eagle mounting is not simply a parade add-on, it is unclear who is expected to operate it. The commander would need to step outside the turret, making it harder for them to command the vehicle while also exposing them to enemy fire. It could also be the case that the third crew member, or one of the infantry carried inside, is expected to man the weapon in certain scenarios. The transport compartment is relatively small compared to the older and more numerous 323. It is not believed to carry more than four to six soldiers compared to the 10 or even 12, according to North Korean sources, carried within the 323. In addition, there are limited exits available for soldiers transported inside it. The rear-mounted engine precludes the installation of a rear door or ramp, and instead the soldiers must use a pair of rather diminutive doors on the sides. This is an inefficient dismount method, and potentially very dangerous if the vehicle were to be ambushed. The vehicle also contains a single firing port on each side, allowing a pair of soldiers to engage targets from within the APC. The M2009 is not the first APC based on an amphibious light tank, although as such designs have faded in popularity, it may be one of the last. Both the Soviet Union and People's Republic of China created personnel carriers based on existing PT-76 and Type 63 light tanks. However, these designs, the BTR-50 and Type 77, respectively, fully embraced the battle taxi nature of their role, resulting in vehicles that lacked much in armament, but made up for it in carrying large quantities of infantrymen to and from the battlefield. The M2009 has taken a more hybrid approach, yet in doing so, it still lacks much in the way of modern weaponry while also limiting the number of passengers it can carry. In summary, although the M2009 is the most recent tracked APC introduced into North Korean service, it is unlikely to supplant the more numerous 323 in its role of armored transportation. Offering equivalent firepower on a chassis capable of carrying fewer soldiers in less efficient conditions, the vehicle makes few good arguments for itself. While carrying more firepower than South Korea's K200 APC, it possesses inferior firepower and worse troop carrying capacity compared to South Korea's infantry fighting vehicles, including its small fleet of BMP-3s and the more numerous K-21. And so this concludes our look at the M2009 Chunma D. What do you think, a poor man's APC or did we miss something that makes the vehicle more viable than we gave it credit for? Let us know in the comments. If you weren't already, consider becoming a subscriber so you don't miss out on a single video. If you want to contribute more directly, consider Patreon or PayPal. The money comes back to you in the form of bigger and better videos. Until next time, keep us in your sights.